Hi everybody, this is a review video of the first graders English, Geography of USA. And here, however, when it comes to Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, South Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and others, Americans are pushing a door already open due to those countries' anxiety about their giant neighbor and keenness to engage with Washington. So country like this, Japan, Thailand, Vietnam, South Korea, they are already open to American government, right? So America, they are pushing at the door. So you know they are really directly asking this government, asking this government to work with USA, to to work with American government. And these countries, they have an anxiety about the giant neighbor. Can you guess who this giant neighbor? might refer to China, right? So these countries are all quite concerned about China. So they are all kin, kin means passionate. They are quite all passionate about engaging with Washington. They all want to work with American government because they are concerned about China, China here. So. They may all have issues with each other, but those issues are dwarfed by the knowledge that if they do not stand together, they will be picked off one by one and eventually fall under Chinese hegemony. You no, know? sometimes these members like Japan, Singapore, Korea, sometimes we have issues, right? We have issues with each other, but these issues are dwarfed. It it's are uh, shrinken. These issues become shrink by the knowledge that if they don't stand together, if Japan and Korea, if we don't work together, will probably be picked off one by one. China will try to pick one by one Korea and Japan, and eventually will fall under Chinese hegemony, Chinese order. So you know, we have to work together, Korea and, and Japan. And the USA is still in the opening phase of what in 2011 the then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton called the pivot to China. So year 2011, America changed its strategy and they moved to China. The pivot means a big step. They take a big step toward China. So it was an interesting phrase taken by some to mean the abandonment of Europe. So the pivot to China is quite an interesting phrase because some people believe that they are America is completely abandoning Europe because before China, Europe was the biggest count, uh, economy counterpart to America. Now America moved to China. They made the pivot to China. So some people believe that America totally give up uh, Europe. But a pivot toward one place does not mean the abandonment of another. So just because you move to one side, just because you move to China, it doesn't mean that you abandon Europe completely. No. It's more a case of how much weight you put on which foot. So it's more of a balance, how much, how much weight you put on which foot. So you have a both foot, left and right. So, you know, moving to your uh, weight to your left feet, pivoting to a left feet, pivoting to China doesn't mean that you are completely abandoning the other feet, right foot or the European size. It's a matter of how much balance you put into both, both foot. So the many US government foreign policy strategists are persuaded that the history of the 21st century will be written in Asia and in the Pacific. So many American strategists, they believe that the history will be written in Asia and Pacific in 21st century because half of the world's population live there and if India is included, it is expected to account for half of global economic output by 2015. So in Asia and Pacific area, half of the global economy is generated in Asia and Pacific and if we include India in Asia and Pacific, the half of global economic output is generated by 2050 and half of population live in Pacific area. 
So hence, we will see USA increasingly investing time and money in East Asia to establish its presence and its intentions in the region. So USA will spend more time and energy in Pacific East Asia. For example, in Northern Australia, Americans have set up a base for U.S. Marine Corps. So America built a U.S. Marine Corps in North Australia, but in order to exert real influence, they may also have to invest in limited military action to reassure their alliances that they will come to their rescue in the event of hostilities. Not only building the facilities in this area, but also you need to exert. Exert means make. You need to make, a, in order to make a real influence, you sometimes need to make a limited military action in this area. Sending a signal that if something bad happens, if something dangerous happens, America has to make sure, they have to reassure that their allies, that America will come to help those allies when in the situation of hostilities, in the situation of dangerous case. So for example, if China begins shelling a Japanese destroyer and it looks as if they might take further military action, US Navy may have to fire warning shots toward the Chinese Navy or even fire directly to signal it is willing to go to war over the incident. So let's say that if China shelling, shelling means bombing, if China bombs a Japanese destroyer, it looks as if they might take further military action. If China is kept on attacking Japan, U.S. Navy may have to fire warning shots toward Chinese Navy. U.S. have to take shot against China, sending signal, they even fire directly to signal it is willing to go to war over the incident. So saying that if China doesn't stop, America is willing to go to war. They are sending a signal. Okay? And in the same manner, equally, when North Korea fires at South Korea, South Korea fires back, but currently US does not. So when North Korea first fires to South Korea, South Korea fires back, but US doesn't fire yet. Instead, it puts forces on alert in a public manner to send a signal. If the situation is escalated, you would then fire warning shots at North Korean target and finally direct shot. And instead of, a shot, instead of uh, making a shot at North Korea, USA put its forces on alert in a public manner to send a signal. They move around their forces. They move around their military to send a signal that if the situation escalated, if North Korea doesn't stop, if just North Korea keep on firing, uh, firing, maybe U.S. will shot at North Korean target. They first fire warning shots. Then eventually they fire with direct, direct shots to North Korea. So it's a way of escalating without declaring war. So this is a, a, a main, uh, way of escalating tension and managing the crisis without declaring war. And this is when things get dangerous. But, you know, even though you didn't declare war, this situation is getting quite dangerous. Because if escalation, if tension keeps escalating, it sometimes, you know, get actually explode. So this is a really dangerous situation. So the USA is seeking to demonstrate to the whole region that it is in their best interest to side with Washington. So what America does in the Pacific and East China Sea area is they try to show, they try to send a signal to the whole region, to, to all the foreign government, it is your best interest to take side with Washington. And China is doing the opposite. So China also is sending a signal to all these neighboring countries and to all this region that it is their own interest to take side with China. So USA and China are doing the same thing, okay, exactly the same thing. So when they challenged, each side must react because for each challenge it ducks, its alliances, allies' confidence and competitor fear 
slowly drains away until eventually there is an event which persuades a state to switch side. So if either China and USA, if they are challenged against each other, they have to, they must react because for each challenge it ducks. You guys remember the meaning of duck, right? Every time you avoid your challenge, if China avoids challenge of USA or USA avoids challenge from China, it's allies' confidence. Your ally, your friend country will lose its confidence on your government. And your competitors, they will lose their fear on your government if you keep on avoiding challenge, if you keep on avoiding conflict from the others. Until eventually there is an event which persuades the state to switch side. So if you keep on Avoiding, if you keep on ducking the uh, conflict, your ally will eventually switch, change the side. They will go to the other side, leaving you. Analysts often write about the need for certain cultures not to lose face or even be seen to back down. But it is not just a problem in Arab or East Asian cultures. It is a human problem expressed in different ways. So analysts sometimes they write about the need for certain cultures not to lose faith. So in certain cultures, in certain cultures like Arab or in certain cultures like East Asian, including Korea, China, Japan, it is important not to lose a faith. It is important that not feel Not feeling shameful about yourself is very important in Arab and East Asian country. However, it's not just these two countries. It is a human problem expressed in different way. It means that all over the world, all over the country, not to lose a face or not to be seen to back down. Back down means run away. Not to be seen from runaway is really important, not, in, not just in Arab East Asia, but in all, all, all around the world. So it may well be more defined and openly articulated in those two cultures. Yes, of course, in these two cultures. Arab and East Asia. They are more openly articulated that not to lose a face is important, but, you know, American foreign policy strategists are as aware of the issues as any other power. So even American foreign policy strategists, they consider it important not to lose face. So the English language even has two sayings which demonstrate how deeply ingrained the idea is. So English language has two expressions that reflect the importance of not losing a face. So here, give them an inch and they will take a mile. There is this saying that if you help out your friend just a little bit, they will ask, for, ask you for more. And President Theodore Roosevelt, Maxim of 1900, which now centered, entered the political lexicon, speak softly but carry a big stick. And President Theodore, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, he said that speak softly but carry a big stick. So if, uh, if, when you have a foreign diplomacy, speak softly, speak kindly to them. But just speaking for softly, just speaking kindly, it's not going to work. They are not going to listen to you. If you speak softly, they will ask you for more. They will take a mile. They will ask for more. So what you need is a, you need to carry a big stick. You need to carry a big, powerful weapon behind you while you are speaking softly. That way, other foreign countries will listen to what you are saying. So this idea, this expression, reflect that even in America, not losing face is quite important. So the deadly game, game in this century will be how the Chinese, American, and others in the region manage each crisis that arise without losing face and without building up a deep well of resentment and anger on both sides. So the deadly game, deadly game is fatal game.
war, a very dangerous game. Deadly game in this century will be how Chinese how, Chine how Chinese and Americans how they manage crisis without losing without making other countries feeling losing face or without making one country angry one country resent against each other okay and angry and resent anger and resent same similar meaning without making any country angry against each other managing the crisis is important so for instance like the cuban missile crisis is generally considered an american victory what is less publicized is that several months after russia removed its missiles from cuba the united states removed its jupiter missiles from turkey so Cuban Missile Crisis is a good example how you manage crisis without making, without losing the face. Many people, many, many people consider that Cuban Missile Crisis is an American victory. And it is less publicized. Less people know, not many people know that, you know, after Russia removed its missile from Cuba, United States also removed its Jupiter missiles removed its missile from Turkey. So it's not just a American victory and Russian lose. No. Russia take a step back by removing missile from Cuba. America also take a step back by removing missile from Turkey. So it's an agreement and negotiation compromise of both sides. Not a victory of one side and loss of the other side. So it was solved without making any country, without making one country feeling that they are losing its face. So that's why the Cuban Missile Crisis was a successful case. So it was actually a compromise. So Cuban Missile Crisis was a compromise with both sides eventually able to tell their respective publics that they had not capitulated. So capitulated means lost. So both Russian government and American government, they could tell its own citizens that they, they didn't lose. So in the 21st century Pacific, there are more great power compromises to be made. So in the 21st century Pacific, there will be more compromises to be made because Pacific and East Asia is quite important in 21st century. So in the short term, most, but not all, are likely to be made by Chinese. An early example is Beijing's declaration of air defense identification zone requiring foreign nation to inform them before entering what is disputed territory and an American deliberately flying through it without telling them. So maybe in the short term example, maybe China, for example, is likely to make a compromise in this area. And for example, the Beijing declared air defense identification zone. So China declared this air defense zone saying that all the foreign government, all the foreign nations need to require to inform China before they are entering into this uh, disputed territory. So China is announcing that this disputed area, like East China Sea, belong to us. But America definitely, deliberately, they are flying through it without telling them. America is de deliberately ignoring Chinese intention by flying into the air defense identification zone announced by China. So the Chinese gained something by declaring the zone. You know? So even though America didn't really care, China gained something by declaring the zone in the sky and making an issue. They made an international issue. So they made it clear that this area belonged to China. And USA also gained something by being seen not to comply. So USA also gained something by showing that they don't care about Chinese order. So America also gained something. So it's a long game. Okay. So this like conflict uh, competing against each other in the Pacific Asian area. It's not just a short term game. This is a long term game. So. Here, 
the U.S. policy regarding the Japanese is to reassure them that they share strategic interests vis-a-vis -vis China and ensure that the U.S. base in Okinawa remains open. So here in the Pacific area, U.S. policy is to make sure that uh, they are uh, working, working together with Japanese vis-a-vis. Vis-a-vis -vis means through. The USA is try to work with Japanese government through Chinese issues, like try to work together with, with Japan using the China issue, and ensure that U.S. base in Okinawa remains open, and also U.S. government trying uh, hard to maintain the Okinawa American base is open for USA, and the Americans will assist the Japanese self-defense force to be a robust body, body, but simultaneously restrict Japan's military ability to challenge the U.S. in, in the Pacific. So U.S. will actively, U.S. will try to work actively with Japan and simultaneously try to restrict, stop Japan. America will try to work together with Japan and try to stop Japan if Japanese military power become too big in Pacific area, America probably will try to stop them. And while all the other countries in the region matter in what is a completely domestic jigsaw puzzle, the key state to look to be Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. So all the countries in the region, in the Pacific region and East China region is very important. They are very complicated diplomatic puzzle, part of the puzzle. However, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore are one of the most important areas because these three sits astride a strait of Malacca because Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore are closely located to a strait of Malacca which is the narrowest is only 1.7 miles across. And strait of Malacca is very narrow and very important area because every day through that strait come 12 million barrel of oil heading for an increasingly thirst China and elsewhere in the region because through this strait of Malacca 12 million barrel of oil goes through to each nation goes through China Korea Japan eventually America and as long as these three countries are pro-American Americans have a key advantage so as long as Strait of Malacca is open, so the American can get oil from this uh, Strait of Malacca, this area is quite fine. Okay, so we'll stop here. Okay, and thank you for your participation, and we'll continue our lesson next time. Okay, so thank you guys. Bye bye.